Hey YouTube, Colorful Codes here. So today I want to do another algorithm from Cracking the Coding interview. And I was thinking, well, I wasn't thinking about it. We're going to do it. We're going to do the, um, the stack of plates question. It's the one that you, like, you're imagining that you have an imaginary stack of plates. And then um, if it gets too high, it might fall. So you have to create a new stack. So we're going we're gonna to utilize a list to show an example and we're going to implement it and yeah so basically unlike the last version this one isn't my code i found this online but um i think it's pretty much the only one i could find in python and i thought i would explain exactly what's going on i'm going to show you a visualization of the question and yeah it's it's in chapter three and it's 3.3 .3. all right so we're given a capacity um filled in in the function and we can choose any capacity so let's say we're going to give it a capacity of four however what if there's 10 numbers to be given into uh like we have 10 plates so we're gonna we're gonna um, stack the plates we're gonna use numbers to exemplify those plates so basically um say we have a number one through ten so here we have our stack and we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, we've reached our limit. That can be stacked. These are the plates. So each stack has to have four plates. So now we're going to have to create a new stack. All right, so we're going to have to have not just four, but then another stack, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then that's the second stack. Can y'all see that? And then we still have two more numbers, right? So we're gonna have to do another stack, nine, 10. So basically that's what we're gonna have to do. Um, this is gonna be a nested, a nested uh, array because it's gonna be a list of the stacks. Okay, so what we're going to do is that we're going to have a class, and our class is going to be called set of stacks. So here's our class, and we're going to call it set of stacks. Okay. And then within that class, we're going to have the function to initialize. And then we're going to have our capacity, like before our capacity was 4. So you're going to enter the capacity in. And then, so we're going to represent our, like before we did with the, the other um, stack question, where we normally use a list to represent a stack. So we're going to have cell dot stacks. And it's going to be represented as a list, an empty array. Okay? And remember that a stack is the, like a stack of books. The last book in is the first one out. And then a queue is, is like a, a line of people at a movie theater. The first person in line is the first one to get in. So that's what a queue is. Okay, so. We want to make sure that um, the capacity is greater than one because you can't have a capacity of zero. It doesn't make any sense. So here we can raise an error. So if capacity is less than one, raise main error. And it will be like not possible. Or you could just say um, it has to be greater than one or something. My camera battery is dying, so it keeps shutting off on me. So I'm just going to show you the next line that I wrote. This is the, we're setting the um, self.capacity to capacity. So if, if capacity is 4, that's what self.capacity is. 
So because I write big, I'm going to erase this and then I'm going to do the next function. So we're going to do the push function, we're going to do the pop function, and yeah. So the next step we're going to do is push. Alright. So we're going to check if, um, if the stack is empty. So first we're going to define um, the push function. Define push. And it's going to hold self because it's a class, but it's also going to hold um, the item that's being pushed. So before we push the numbers 1 through 10, it would push any of those numbers. And then we're going to say if um, self.stacks is empty, you represent that with, with the uh, empty array. Then we're going to append. So we're going to say self dot stacks dot append and if you can't see anything right now I'm going to post another I'm going to do a blog post and I will explain everything in the blog post so you can check the description box okay so we're going we're to append the item but we're going to append the item as a list right so if it's empty we're going to append it as a list. So now it's a list, it's, it's a nested array. However, if it's not empty, so if the length of self dot stacks negative one. So negative one in this case, it's not the specific number, it's the last array. So before you saw we had one through four, that was one array, and then we had five through five, six, seven, eight, five through eight, that was another array, and then we had nine through ten, that was another array. Those are three items, those are three arrays in the main stack, or three stacks in the main stack. So um, basically it would, it would grab the nine and ten. So it would check um, the nine and ten, and it, it would see if it's at capacity. Nine and ten, it's only two numbers. So since 9 and 10 are only two numbers, um, and 4 can be added, it's going to append that item to the array in which 9 and 10 is, or the stack that 9 and 10 is. So what we're going to do is that we're going to, so we're going to check if the last array or the last stack in the main stack, right? If it's greater than or equal to, I don't even know if you guys can see that greater than or equal to the capacity. Then we're going to um, append self dot stacks dot append. So in this case, if it reached capacity, the capacity is four, like the first two. It's going to create a new stack, and it's going to add that stack to it. So say um, before we had 9 and 10, it's going to, previously it would add, then it would add 9, it would add, a, after 10, 11, then 12, but then 13 would have to be a new stack. So in this case, 13 would be creating another one. So here we're going to do um, the item right here. However, else, else, here we're just going to add that item to the last. So like, um, in case uh, the item was 11 and 9 and 10 is in the, are the only two numbers in that, in that stack, it would add 11 to it. So we're going to add self that stacks. Negative one, okay? Dot append. So we're appending 11 in, in a hypothetical case. Um, we're appending 11. So, all right, so this is the, um, the push function. And I hope, I'm, I hope I'm explaining it right. So yeah, so now I'm gonna show you the pop function. So here we have our original um, visual visualization, right? We have three stacks, okay? 
and these stacks, they're both full, but this one, this can hold two more numbers. But anyways, um, we're, not, we're not adding two more numbers. If we wanted to access the, the last um, stack in the main stack, we would do like a self, self that stacks negative one. However, if we wanted to access the last element in the last stack, it would be a second negative one. So we're doing two negative ones. We're accessing not just the last stack, but then the last element in that stack. So this is what we're going to be doing. However, that's how we access it. But what happens once we remove this, right? Here we have only nine in, in, in a stack. What we're going to have to do is that when we pop out nine, right, we can't just, we can just leave the empty stack there. We're going to have to delete it. So that's what we're going to do in the code that I'm about to show you. So first we're going to check to see if the stack is empty because we can't pop from empty stack. So we're going to raise that error. So we're going to define um, pop. And it's going to be self. And then we're going to check. So if self.stacks equals an empty stack, we're going to raise an error. And it could be whatever you want it to say. It doesn't really matter. You, can't, you would just say can't pop from empty stack. I'm just going to leave that blank. Um, and then we're going to have our else statement. And this is where the real magic happens. So we're going to have a variable now. It's going to be the pop data. So it's going to hold, um, it's going to hold the last element. So popped. You know what we'll just call it popped. And we're going to have it, it's going to be self.stacks. And like I showed you before, it's going to grab the last element, not just the last stack or the last list. It's going to grab the last element. So we negative one, and not just one negative one, but two negative ones. We have that in totally. So we're going to check if the length of self.stacks negative one. So before, it was 9 and 10. So if the length of it equals 1, we're going to delete. We're going to delete the entire stack. So, so we, like, if we just popped out 9, like, it would be an empty stack there. So self.stacks. And I know some people, they don't believe in deleting a stack. So I mean, there's other ways that you can do that. You could pop, save the pop data into a, a Another, um, what do you call it? List or something? To be honest, I really don't know. <laughs> I just don't delete functions. <laughs> All right. So negative one. And then here we're gonna have another else statement. We're just gonna delete so dot. Negative one. Or in this case, you can just use the regular pop function. Like I feel like this right here is a necessary kind of. Um, but in reality, like if you just want to pop the last element, you just use um, dot pop. It's a built-in function, so you don't necessarily have to use the delete in Python. But in this case, um, we are when we're deleting the last um, element in, in whichever in whichever stack that we're in. Okay? And then we're just going to return the pop data. Okay? So this is the pop function. And also in cracking the coding interview, ooh, all right, also in cracking the coding, is this still recording? Oh shoot, it's about to die. It's literally all red. Um, there's also a pop app function where you can, you can add in the actual index. I'm gonna show you that in the description below so that you can see that for yourself. But yeah, that's all I can show you right now. Um, sorry about that, but hopefully this was useful. And I wanna do another few algorithms. I wanna do matrix questions, like number of islands and rotating matrix and stuff like that. 
So stay tuned for that. I'm going to do it next week. All right. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye.